Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. This is a new video in which you will learn that how to find the kinematic indeterminacy of pin jointed plane frame or we can call it truss. If you want to learn how to find the kinematic indeterminacy of beam or frame, I have already made a detailed explanation videos on such topic. I will be posting link to this topic in the description of this video. Before learning how to find the kinematic indeterminacy of truss, let's first learn what actually is kinematic indeterminacy. So kinematic indeterminacy is defined as the minimum number of dimensions in which the movement is allowed for the structure. These structural movements are also called the degrees of the freedom and they are independent of each other. You can call a structure to be kinematically indeterminate if these displacement components of its joint cannot be determined by compatibility equations alone and you need the equations of static equilibrium to find these unknown displacements. The number of these additional equations necessary for the determination of these independent uh, displacement components is known as the degree of kinematic indeterminacy or you can say the degree of freedom of the structure. Kinematic indeterminacy which is represented by dk for any structure it is given as the total possible degree of freedom minus the number of available support reactions which generate as a result of restrained joint displacement. This is the general formula to find the kinematic indeterminacy of any structure. In the context of the truss, kinematic indeterminacy of truss is given as dk is equal to 2j minus r, where this j, this is the number of uh, joints and r is the number of reactions. So this is the formula to find the kinematic indeterminacy of a truss. Now we will solve some relevant examples on this uh, kinematic indeterminacy to better understand the concept. Let us first take the truss first. For this truss I can say that this truss has six number of joints that is one, two, three, four, five and six and three reactions that is one at this roller and two at this uh, pin support. So j is equal to six and r is equal to three. Uh, the value of dk is equal to 9. It means that uh, this truss is kinematically indeterminate up to 9 degrees. Or you can say that this truss has 9 degrees of freedom. Similarly, for truss uh, second, we can find out that this truss has 5 number of joints and 4 reactions. 2 at this uh, hinge support and 2 at this hinge support. So the value of the degree of kinematic indeterminacy of this truss is equal to 6. It means this truss has 6 degrees of freedom. For a truss 3, I can see that this truss has 8 number of joints and 3 reactions, 2 at this pin end and 1 at this roller. So the value of dk for this truss is equal to 13. It means this truss has 13 degrees of freedom. For truss 4, I can see that the total number of joints this truss has 12 and there are 3 support reactions. So the value of dk for this truss is 21. It means this truss has 21 degrees of freedom. For truss 5, this truss has total number of 9 joints and 3 support reactions to at this hinge support and one at this roller support. So the value of dk for this truss is equal to 15. It means this truss has 15 degrees of freedom. For truss 6, I can see that the total number of joints this truss has is 7 and there are 3 support reactions. So the value of dk for this truss is 11. It means this truss has 11 degrees of freedom. For truss 7, this uh, truss has total of 8 joints and uh, 3 reactions. 
So the value of dk is equal to 13. This means this truss has 13 degrees of freedom. For truss 8, this truss has 6 joints, 3 sport reactions. The value of dk comes out to be uh, equal to 9. This means this truss has 9 degrees of freedom. For truss 9, this truss has a total of 7 joints and 4 reactions. That is one at this roller, one at this roller and two at this hinge port. So total of 4 reactions. The value of dk for this truss is equal to 10. It means this truss has 10 degrees of freedom. For truss 10, this truss has a total of 7 joints and 3 support reactions. It means the value of dk for this truss is 11 or you can say this truss has 11 degrees of freedom. For truss 11, this truss has a total of 7 joints and 3 support reactions. The value of dk for this truss comes out to be equal to 11. It means this truss has 11 degrees of freedom. For truss 12, this truss has 12 joints and 3 reactions. The value of dk for this truss comes out to be equal to 21. It means this truss has 21 degrees of freedom. For truss 13, this truss has total of 6 joints and 4 support reactions to at this hinge port to at this hinge port. So the value of dk for this truss comes out to be equal to 8. It means this truss has 8 degrees of freedom. Finally, for truss 14, this truss has total of 7 joints and 2 support reactions, one at this uh, roller support and one at this roller support. So the value of dk for this truss is 12. It means this truss has 12 degrees of freedom. So this is how you can find the kinematic indeterminacy of any truss. I have tried my best to present this topic in as simple and clear language as I can. And I hope that you now fully understand how to find the kinematic indeterminacy of trust. If you found this uh, video helpful, you can like this video, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends to help the channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.